the Americans don't have jobs, it is because of two reasons. The greed of Wall Street and China. The way America left Afghanistan, even though it was after the Doha agreement, and there was a signed agreement between the Taliban and the Americans, but the optics, you can't be a superpower. Today, the roads in America are dilapidated. The airports are falling apart. The schools lack funding. The healthcare system lacks funding. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Uh, there have been series of surveys in the United States of America and something very interesting is coming up and not for the first time. It has been in the making for a while now, ladies and gentlemen. Today, China is perceived as the top enemy of the people of the United States of America. And here is what it says. China remains the top perceived enemy of the United States for the fourth consecutive year with 41% of Americans holding this view with a slight decrease from previous years. There is a slight decrease because the percentage, you know, it's, it's got to be out of 100. So there are new enemies coming up all the time. And there is another interesting fact which is coming up. So we'll, we'll dwell on this a little more. But Russia follows as the second perceived enemy uh, named by 26% of the people by Iran comes at 9 no surprises about Iran. It has been America's enemy number one since 1979, since the revolution. But this decrease in how people perceive China is also largely because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Out of 100, China was enemy number one. China still remains enemy number one. But it has come down a little bit because that percentage point has now gone to Russia. Russia has seen an uptick here. And uh, interestingly, 5% of the Americans view their own country as their greatest enemy. Marking a record high since the question was first posed in 2001. So internal reflection is this, that the unprecedented 5% of Americans identifying their own nation as its greatest enemy reflects a growing internal critique within the United States. This shift coincides with decreasing concerns over North Korea. So what is this about, ladies and gentlemen? Two things. First of all, uh, China deserves it. And I'm saying that over a period of time, if if... If the Russia-Ukraine war stops and there are serious attempts being made at peace and India is at the core of this, you know, group of nations that actually want peace, right? Not the Western nations, by the way. I'm talking about India and a few other nations. If there is peace, and I hope there is peace between Russians and, and the Ukrainians, this percentage of China is going to see an incremental jump. Today, if the Americans don't have jobs, it is because of two reasons. The greed of Wall Street and China. Wall Street is greedy. Wall Street doesn't care about America. It does not care about American lives. Wall Street cares only about profits. And we don't deny anybody their profit. If you're in business, you will want profit. But to start wars, to kill people for profit, there should be a line. There should be ethical profit. And make lots of profit. Nobody's saying don't make profit. Look at Tata Group in India. This is the first example that comes to mind. Look at the Tata group. Ethical people. I've worked for Azim Premji. Azim Premji was my super boss, the chairman of Wipro, the former chairman. He was my super boss. If you can say that, hey, here is an Indian businessman that is absolutely and totally ethical, it is Azim Premji. Apart from Ratan Tata, of course. It's possible to make billions upon billions of dollars to be extremely successful without compromising on ethics. It's, it's very possible. But this is not what Wall Street does. And this, you know, this entire business going to China. Today, the American people say China is enemy number one. And this is my request to the American people. This is my request to all of you. Stop buying Chinese stuff. Stop buying Chinese stuff. I'm telling the Europeans, I'm telling the Americans, stop buying Chinese stuff because there will be a war. China will try to invade Taiwan. If not today, then five, ten years from now, China will do this. China has promised uh, a reunification before it completes, before the Communist Party of China celebrates its 100th anniversary. They will do it. It's a matter of time before China does it. Xi Jinping is going to be in power for many, many years. He'll probably die in harness. China is going on a different trajectory altogether. And I want to tell the, I tell this to Indians all the time. And here I'm addressing my American brothers and sisters and my European brothers and sisters. Every time you buy something Chinese, okay, you don't know which company is making it and who are on the board of directors. And there are many, many companies in China that make or manufacture niche technologies. 
right? Niche items. And behind all these board of directors are shell companies upon shell companies upon shell companies and finally it's owned by PLA, the People's Liberation Army. You buy a Chinese mobile phone, a mobile phone manufactured in China. The money goes to China. China uses it to buy weapons to threaten your Marines, to threaten your Air Force, your Navy and your Army. Whenever you buy, and I'm saying this to all the Americans who are watching because you are the people responsible for making China that Godzilla. Had it not been for you, China would have been a poor third world country. You made China rich. You made China an economic powerhouse. It is you Americans. And only you can bring down China. Whenever, Americans, I want to tell you this, whenever you buy anything Chinese, you're giving money to China to buy weapons. It's going to threaten your freedom. Now, about this 5% of Americans identifying themselves as uh, their own worst enemy and threat, it should have been higher than 5%. And I'll tell you why. The way America has, you know, we must understand, I have a lot of differences with Donald Trump here. I don't like the way he talks. But when he's right, he's right. And you've got to grant it to the man that he's right. Uh, an interviewer was asking him, a lady was asking, you know, uh, do you actually support Ukraine or you don't so support Ukraine? And do you think you should continue to fund Ukraine? As president, will you continue to fund Ukraine? And Trump kept on saying that within 24 hours, I'll make sure that this war stops. And he said, no, but you don't, don't you want Ukraine to win? And he said, I want people to stop dying. That's all he said. And I think what Trump is saying is very logical. He wants people to stop dying, stop fighting, stop dying. And for the Americans to stop giving America's infrastructure is in shambles today. And who's to blame? Not China, not Russia, not any of those countries, not Iran, not North Korea. It is the Americans themselves. It's the American government. You are willing to give $2 trillion for a war in Afghanistan that could have been fought. You could have just managed it with a few billion dollars. That was the Northern Alliance. You could have kept on funding the Northern Alliance. Right? You could have put your special forces, Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Delta Force there to carry out intelligence-based operations. You could have had airstrips inside Pakistan, fighter-based operations, and let Northern Alliance and a whole lot of other people to do the dirty work, but you put your troops in harm's way. You wasted $2 trillion because you wanted to give your own companies money and profits, weapon companies, you know, big companies. You wanted to do all of that, and it's okay. I don't, I don't say that weapons companies or arms manufacturers don't need to make profit. My problem is against American lawmakers. The people who sit in Congress, the people who sit in Senate, people who make decisions for the American people. You know, two trillion dollars. Two trillion dollars. I mean, it could have changed America's infrastructure. It could have changed all the airports in America. It could have changed much of the roads in America. Today, the roads in America are dilapidated. The airports are falling apart. The schools lack funding. The healthcare system lacks funding. And America could have just done it. Out of out of two trillion dollars, how much would it take? Fund the Northern Alliance. Just keep on funding the Northern Alliance. Doesn't matter. Let them fight. Give them state-of-the-art weapons. They should have done with Northern Alliance what they are doing with Ukraine. They should have done that. They did not do it. And today, America is in shambles. Which is why Trump keeps on saying, make America great again. This is exactly why he says, make America great again. He says, your priorities are absolutely skewed in the wrong direction. You don't know where to go. And the way America left Afghanistan, even though it was after the Doha agreement, and there was a signed agreement between the Taliban and the Americans. But the optics, you can't be a superpower and leave a place like a bunch of thieves in the dead of night. It doesn't work like that. What will the world think? America never thought about that. Joe Biden said, let's leave, let's leave. It was such a hurry to leave. So, my friends, all I'm trying to say is that if 5% of the Americans feel that America is the biggest danger, they're not wrong. I would have expected it to be 20-25%. Let me tell you honestly, America is a bigger danger to America than Russia. That is the truth. And what Trump is saying is not wrong. 
I may disagree with Trump and I have a lot of disagreements, but Trump is not wrong. And these 5% are Trump supporters. I can tell you that as well. Now, as far as uh, partisan perspectives are concerned, republics and independents primarily view China as the top adversary, while Democrats focus more on Russia. Independents are more likely than others to cite the United States itself as a significant adversary. Now, global favorability, this is very important. Despite being perceived as an adversary, China does not receive the lowest favorability ratings, which are reserved for Russia and North Korea. I don't know why they are obsessed with North Korea. North Korea does nothing except for, you know, second generation, first generation rockets. They keep on putting them into the sea. North Korea, see, North Korea is too much of talk. Your problem, I'm telling you, America has two problems. America's first problem is America and the second problem is China. Even Russia can be contained. But the problem is you're not talking to the Russians. You're funding the Ukrainians so that they keep on fighting against Russia and your Cold War mindset. You need to bring Russia to the negotiating table. And it's not going to happen. You see, the Russians have a very old history. Understand the people, understand the culture. The Russians may be extremely upset with Putin. There may be a lot of people who think that no. You know, Putin is not the right guy and this war should not have happened. But at the same time, Russians are hardcore nationalists. That is the character of the Russian people. You cannot change that character. They might disagree. Disagreeing with Putin and disagreeing with the fact that Russia should have not gone to war or should not have gone to war with the Ukrainians is one matter. But if you think that they are going to compromise on the self-respect of Russia, you are sadly mistaken. They are hardcore nationalists. And the Russians are, for the Russians, and I've spoken to some of them, for them, Russia is a living, breathing entity. It's not a piece of land. There is something more. It's, it's, you know, like the Hindus say that Janani Janamu Bhumishya Swarga Dapi Gari Yasi. It, it is something like that for the Russians. So to get a Russian to say that, no, 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 I'm against Russia, that's not going to happen. You have to bring Russia. If tomorrow everybody starts attacking Russia, these very people who are against Putin, you know, these very people, they're going to rally behind Putin. All these guys I'm telling you, all these liberal guys in Russia, all these guys who are taking out placards and protesting against Putin, if they know or if they come to know that Russia, here the problem is that Russia is attacking. Russia is not under attack. The day Russia comes under attack, all these protests will automatically stop and every single one of them, every single one of these Russians who are protesting against Putin are going to pick up an AK-47 and go and join the armed forces of Russia and they're going to fight against the, they've, they've been doing it, they did it to Hitler also. They've done it to everybody who's come from outside. These very same people, you know, when the Tsars were there, Napoleon attacked. And this is exactly what happened to Napoleon. Exactly what happened to Napoleon. For Russians, it's a don't fight the Russians. Bring them to the negotiating table. Make peace with them. Sign treaties and say that, okay, we'll take care of your concerns if you have this concern. If you fight the Russians, th there is no ending this war then. You can keep on fighting, they'll keep on fighting. They don't care. Russians don't care. They'll keep on fighting for the next 10 years. Bottom line, the shifting perceptions revealed in the poll reflect the dynamic and often polarized views of the American populace regarding global adversaries and allies. Legislative actions such as proposed bans or forced sale of companies like TikTok hint at escalating tensions with China. This is something that, you know, uh, a lot of people have said and a lot of people have uh, in, in, in the United States of America, including politicians and lawmakers have said that if India can ban TikTok. Why can't America ban TikTok? America, go ahead and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, I come to the end of my video today. Now for question and answers. The first question is from Partha Parth Popat. Namaste Gaurav Our ancestors used the word Pushkar for what is today called South America. Could you explain to us how 13 British colonies turned into USA? Were the natives really savages like Westerners believe them to be? Jai Hanuman. Uh, Parth Popat Ji, I don't know. The, the real answer, the true answer to your question is I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that the history that I've read, American history itself. So you've got to believe some history. You've got to believe somebody's history. I've never been to the United States of America. I have relatives there and they're sick and tired of telling me to come and visit and I've not visited in the past 30 years. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, 13 British colonies, they got together, they declared independence. There was a charter, there was a constitution and that is all that I know. And as far as, you know, not savages. I would not call the Red Indian savages. They had their own tribal society. They were in different stages of evolution, social evolution. That is how they lived and they were happy. <coughs> Siri Nivasan, people are talking about Jackson-Warnick Amendment 19, 
74, Lautenberg Amendment 89 and such refugee admissions. We should ask USA about which part of Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 is wrong according to them and which part of it is different from those USA Acts. When USA does it, we should celebrate it as magnanimity and compassion towards Jews and Semitic Christians. And when our beloved Bharat does it, somehow it is against the interest of Indian Muslims. Are we still paying attention to woke white man's uh, ratification? No. Srinivasan ji, very well brought out by you. I must congratulate you on your knowledge. But the thing is that America has said this to India and that is the end of the issue. Some odd American guy will say it because there are pressure groups in America. You can pay money, right? And this is, you know, like I mentioned in my, in my video, 5% of America think that America is America's greatest enemy. Many independent lawmakers feel that America is America's biggest enemy. It is the nature of the people to criticize. They criticize themselves also, right? And number two, there is obviously money at work. There are pressure groups at work. So people will lobby. There are lobbyists there. There are pressure groups there. And that is what they do. And they are doing the same thing. It does not matter to India. I don't think we should, we should take it to heart. It's okay. If America is saying it, let them say it. Ignore. Thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.